Peter, thank you so much for running through all these different assets and you know, your reputation precedes you. So we did get some questions about um, how to trade charts. And John wants to know, in your experience, how successful are patterns, especially those with horizontal boundaries like head and shoulders, right angle triangles, on lower time frames like hourly um, charts compared with longer term charts like weekly and daily? Not reliable. I mean, I mean here, here's the reality is that charts morph. You know, you see something that you think, okay, this is what I'm looking at, and it has a way of becoming something different. And the reality is that one-minute charts morph more often than five-minute charts, more often than 10-minute charts, more often than one-hour charts, more often than two-hour charts, more often than six-hour charts, more often than daily charts, more often than weekly charts. And so uh, it, 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 there, there's, there's two parts to this answer. One is you just have a lot more unreliability as you go down the time scale. Does that mean there are not trades that take place on the lower time scale? Of course, that doesn't mean that. There certainly will be times when you see a pattern on an hourly chart and the pattern works. More often than not, you can say, especially if that pattern occurs in a trend and you think it's going to reverse that trend on a lower time frame, more often than not, it's going to morph and it's going to resolve itself in the direction of the dominant time a trend in that time frame. And so I, I, I caution people against that, but that really raises a, a whole big philosophical question, and that is to chart patterns predict are chart patterns an accurate, uh, a reliable way to forecast price? To that, I would say absolutely not. They're overrated. That chart patterns in and of themselves do not provide a big edge to a trader. I'm sorry, they don't. Now, I've made money trading charts for 45 years. So I'm telling you that as somebody who has been profitable by trading chart construction for 45 years, chart patterns do not provide a significant edge in and of themselves. But I have to use something to determine when I'm going to buy and sell. I have to have some way to say I'm going to be long or I'm going to be short, I'm going to be in or I'm going to be out. Chart patterns provide for me a couple of things. They give me what I think is, they show me what I think is the path of least resistance. They show me levels where there has been support. And it'll suggest the opportunities where I might have an asymmetrical reward to risk trade. It's in that trade management where the edge has gotten. It's in risk management. It's in trade management. It's not in direction. It's more in timing. Because for a trade to be a good trade, it has to be right directionally, and it has to be right tactically. And if it's wrong on either one of those, it's a wrong trade. And so that's what chart patterns are for me. It's just a way for me to pull the trigger and know where I'm wrong. Okay. Um, we got a question. As a trader, how do you deal mentally with losing trades and missed opportunities? How do you stay centered and focused and moving on to the next trade? Hey, um, my job as a trader, my mentor going back to the Board of Trade said, your job as a trader is to take losses. It's your primary occupation. You are in the business of taking losses because that's primarily what you're going to do. And my mental default position is my next trade is going to be a loser. That's the way I think. I have no problem. Negative losing trades don't really affect me. They're part of the territory. I mean, I believe strongly that trading, at least my type of trading, is ruled uh, by Vilfredo Pareto, uh, an Italian philosopher and economist, and that is that. You know, it's the old 80-20 rule. 20% of your trades attribute 80% of your profits. I think for me, I know my numbers year by year by year. I know my credit level. And so it's not really 80-20 for me. It's more like 90-10 or 85-15. That, that, what that means is out of 100 trades, 15% of those trades will produce my net, net bottom line in a year. That's been true for me year in, year out. Year in, year out very stable. 15% of my trades produce 85% of my profits. Some years it's 10. Some years it's over 100. You know, 10% of my trades produce 100% of my profits. 
And so, but that's the reality. And so part of my job is to work my way through the losers to find the Pareto trades. I need a Pareto trade. I need to have 15% of my trades produce my profit. If I can't find those, then I'm in big trouble. But so, so losing trades are losing trades. They come with the territory. You know, it, it's just it, what comes. Now, when I say a losing trade, not necessarily a losing trade. It could be a small winner. It could be something I have a profit and come back and get out of break even. It could be I end up taking my initial loss that I expected the loss in a day or two of the trade. But my job is to take losses. You know, cut my losses short and hopefully let my winners become Pareto trades. As long as their winners give them an opportunity to fulfill the predictions of Vilfredo Pareto. And so losses, the losses are losses. Losses come with the territory. Hey, the markets, and I'm speaking to your audience, the markets don't know you people. They don't know where you live. They don't know the color of your hair. They don't know your personality. They don't take you personal. They don't know you exist. So why do you take a loss personally? It's not a personality defect. It's not a character fault. It's a loss, people. Losses happen. A lot of losses happen. Because you got to work your way through a lot of losses to find the trades that really are going to matter. Okay. That's my answer to that one. That, that is a wonderful place to leave it.